what's up everybody joshua casper back at you with plugin boutique and today we're checking out a brand new manufacturer on plugin boutique and that is minimal audio specifically we're going to be checking out the rift distortion plugin this is a unique distortion engine with 30 custom algorithms spanning from the classic to the never before heard processors and one of the things that's really cool about this is that the distortion engine is built around a technique that they call bipolar processing which allows you to manipulate the positive and the negative portions of the waveform separately and then you can even blend the two halves together in unique ways. Now that is only scratching the surface of what is possible with Rift. So that being said, let's just go ahead and jump in. I'm going to run you through all the parameters and show you it on a few different elements inside of this project I'm working on. Right now I've got Rift on this bass. This is what the bass sounds like by itself. All right, pretty clean 808. And I've said it before, if you're you know, a part of the community here on YouTube, when I test a saturation or distortion VST, I always put it on a clean sub because the clean sub is, well, it's just a clean sine wave and it's got a lot of low frequency content and then distortion is going to add higher frequency content. And I can really hear the profile or the character that's being added very clearly when I add it to a, a nice clean sub. So that's what we're doing here. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you Rift on some vocals and on that big brassy hit too because it's absolutely insane when you get into some of the presets. And by the way, the presets right here, so many presets, helpfully labeled. I find it's really easy just to jump in and go straight to simple distortion and then move from there in terms of automation and manipulation and modulation. But so many, so many for like whatever you're looking to do, whether it's 808s like we're here or, you know, synths or pads or vocals, helpful chapters essentially are packs here. We can also flip over to tags and, and filter through that way as well. But let's just, I'm on full roasted or full toasted rather, and it's just a basic preset here. And I'm going to just go ahead and feed in the, the wet signals. You can hear what it does. All right. So what we're looking at here is kind of the play view or the simple view. I forgot what it's called, but there's an advanced view where you can get in and really jump into what's going on. Now, as I said, this is the simple distortion preset. So there's not a lot in terms of modulation. Uh, the feedback unit isn't on. The filter isn't on. But let's just go ahead and start to play around with these things. And I'll walk you through what's available here. So first of all, we've got the drive. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to come into user and just go to default and come back out of here. So this is it, default. Nothing's happening. Listen to the drive distortion and saturation just by messing with the drive input here. It sounds really, really good. You also have this two times, which is going to amplify it two times. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty, pretty obvious there, but listen to it. Dude. It just sounds so good. <laughs> like if you're into uh, happy hardcore or that hardcore EDM stuff and you need those big crunchy 808 bass kicks, uh, this plugin is going to do it for you. And it's only using the first parameter available in the GUI here. Uh, there is a trim, which is just going to bring down the tops. OK, again, going to affect the overall shape of the sound. It's very helpful to look right here. You can actually see the waveform and what's happening to it. Um, for there, we have the blend knob. And as I said in the beginning of the video, we have a wave shaper for both the positive and the negative values here. So if I am on, so let's just go into something like wave fold. If I pull this up, you can see that only the positive values of the waveform are getting manipulated here, and the other ones are not. And I could come into a different one and choose something else, and then I can manipulate that. And this just adds, this is a really unique approach to distortion like this and you can get really crazy results. And then you can take the blend and decide how much of each one of those you want to feed into the actual signal. Okay, we also have distortion for the stereo, the wide bits, the mid side bits, the mid or just the sides. 
Uh, and then we have stages, and this is actually going to just kind of beef up the detail or the character of the distortion as well. And uh, just be careful here. It does eat up more CPU the more stages you add. But if you're really looking for the detailed distortion types or uh, distortion results, you're going to want to boost this up. You can go up to six different stages. <laughs> uh, you can even go hard as well. Again, we haven't even got to the feedback in the filter in the modulation settings, and we've already got such a crazy, great sounding distortion. And there are 30 different algorithms inside of here, and some of them you've, you won't see anywhere else besides Rift. So I definitely recommend coming in here and getting into it. Uh, bit depth, sample rate stuff. You got noise, white noise and stuff. Uh, wave folding. This is kind of my favorite. I love the, uh, the results I get with wave folding. And then you have wave shaping as well. Just to touch on real quick, uh, double click. You can enter any value where it, the value is under each one of the knobs here. Or if you double click any one of the parameters, it'll set it back to its default value. Over here, you have a limiter and you have uh, no limiter, then a soft limiter, and then this will limit stuff and do some clipping and you'll get some saturation from that as well. So if you really wanna crank out the output, that's another way to get further distortion in your signal. Then you have your dry wet, awesome. So from there, we come down here to feedback. And this is insane because it can really act like a delay or act like a way to sweeten the character. There's just so many different uses for the feedback control inside of Rift. And another really cool thing before I jump into, you can actually tune it to a certain note inside of you know, the scale, whatever scale you're working in, you can make sure that your uh, your feedback is going to be inside of that scale by using that. And you can also feed MIDI information into it, and it will actually tune the frequency. Like, let's say you have an arpeggiator going through a few notes, you can actually send that MIDI into the feedback control here, and it will tune the feedback uh, signal to those MIDI notes as it comes in. It's really, really cool. You can also do comb filtering as well. Again, just an, a further way to really destroy the signal. And then you have the free and timed where you can actually get some, what sounds like delay. Now, I'm actually gonna leave this here because I have this on the vocal inside of the project here at the beginning of this video, and it's just a better case for using the feedback as a delay. But trust me, when you get in here and you start messing with this, and if you're someone who really likes to mangle the sound, or if you're just looking for some really gnarly delays, Rift has you covered in the feedback section over here. You've got the stereo, you've got a ping pong mode, you've got the feedback mix, and then you also have uh, low pass and high pass for the feedback signal itself. Another cool thing too is if you come in here to tuned, you can actually come in here and say that you only want there to be B, uh, G, and D uh, options available to you. Now, if you look right here, I'll tell you what it is. You can see that I'm only getting G, D, and B. No matter what it says here, this is the actual output. So if you're looking to really filter down, again, whatever scale you're working with, and then if you're gonna automate this uh, either with one of the modulation tools inside of Rift or inside of your DAW, you're gonna be staying inside of the scale uh, all the time. So you can do it like that, or you can do it by feeding MIDI into Rift itself. So cool. From there, we've got a filter, and I believe there are over uh, 20 different filter types, some really unique ones like these morph ones. Uh, they really just morph the signal uh, in interesting ways and you can get some really crazy effects. So you can imagine if I modulate that with say, let's go with an LFO. 
which also has some really cool features. So first of all, to modulate, I just got to drag over the red right here. You see the hand signal comes up. I'm going to pull that over to the morph. And then just like most other DAW uh, plugins, rather, to add the signal, you just got to click right here and go to the right or go to the left, depending on what kind of uh, modulation you're looking for. And there we go. You can speed that up. <laughs> uh, some really, really crazy. Let's get into like a vowel one. So if we go into the harmonics. So another really cool thing too, um, you can easily move through the shapes right here, your standard shapes using the knob, or you can actually use this randomizer. And if I pull this over, you'll see that every time it cycles through, right now we're on synced, every time it goes through what, a half triplet form or a quarter note here, it's gonna completely change up the motion here. It's just a way to add character and interest and just make things feel less robotic. <laughs> And again, another really cool thing about Rift is you can send MIDI into the filter. So if you want the filter cutoff position, let's say I've got uh, a low pass here and this is the cutoff position, right? Let me come down here and oh, double click to set that back. Um, I can actually feed MIDI into this and it will move the cutoff position to the frequency of the incoming MIDI note. So it'll actually follow the sequence that you have on your MIDI clip, which is just a, it's a more detailed way to do filtering rather than just lopping everything off no matter what at a static position. And this also has a way to filter out and only use the note values that you're looking to use. Really, really cool. So uh, from there, we've got envelope follower, we've got curved, and I can come in here and adjust and add points, whatever I wanna do, and I can actually expand this view and come in and really just draw in something crazy. There are a bunch of presets already inside of here. We can randomize, we can delete stuff. Uh, we can choose the, the actual grid size here from the vertical and the horizontal. I mean, this is just, it's insane. <laughs> it's so cool. And if you're someone again, who's looking to really get in and get de detailed oriented with your distortion and your sequences and your modulation, then this is an absolute win. And we have actually two of those curves and it's just so easy to do mo uh, modulation in here. You drag and drop, pull it down and boom, we've got modulation happening. Now we also have macro controls, two of them, which again, drag and drop to assign, and you can assign them to modulators, which is absolutely insane. Oh, and there's one other thing I missed is you can turn on, uh, you can decide to distort the feedback signal. But that being said, that's a quick run through, or actually not too quick, but a run through of all the parameters this incredible plugin has to offer. It took a little bit longer than normal because of how feature packed it is, but I do wanna show you how I was using it on the vocal here. So I'm gonna come in to the vocal. Let's go ahead and open up Rift and this is what it sounds like bypass the vocal. I don't even know if I still like you. All right, it's just a pretty much a dry vocal with some reverb on it. And then if I turn Rift on, we, you notice the feedback section over here. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like me. I mean, it's just giving me a, a, a delay that's helping me fill out those empty spaces in between the vocal, but also the delay is dirty, right? It sounds like it's got character. And this is just one of the presets. We can flip through it, check out some other ones. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. And let's come in and check out some vocal character ones. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you.
I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. And we'll just check out a couple more, and then I want to show you this on those big brassy bass hits because it's it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Twisted feedback sounds fun. I don't even know if I still like you. Like even that, right? I don't even know if I still like you. I do have my dry wet locked here at 15%, which is why we're not getting an incredibly in your face effect, but this is what I would be doing if I were actually trying to find a preset that worked well with vocals because I want my vocal to be front and center, obviously. But this is adding a really cool character to the vocal. I don't even know if I still like you. That's so cool. I don't even know if I still like you. If I pull it up. I don't even know if I still like you. Let's check out a few of them with a, a little over 50% wet. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. I don't even know if I still like you. Oh, come on, bro. I don't even know if I still like you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could keep doing this. It's just, they all just sound really, really cool. And like I said, when I'm just trying to add a little bit of character to an otherwise pretty typical vocal, having it around 10, 15% and having the ability to lock that so I don't need to worry that I'm going to get a 100% wet signal and just blow my ears out. Uh, that's really another really great feature that I'm happy that's baked in there. Yeah, I also might mention that it is resizable. Uh, so the last thing I want to do is just show you it on another piece of audio here. So uh, let's go ahead and just bypass it. This is, okay. So this is the big brassy bass hits that I was talking about. Now let's put Rift on it. I'm gonna come in here to, let's just come in here to something crazy. Mutated bass, right? Let's just choose one. Listen to that, that's insane. Listen, I mean, listen to that. So that's regular. Dirty, dirty character being added to it. Again, uh, for something like this, I'd probably keep it down pretty low and just look to add a little bit of character to the higher frequency content. So I'd come in and lock that down. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so anyway, this has been a long video, but it's just because this is such a great great distortion plugin. If you're looking for a new distortion plugin with a lot of unique features that you're not gonna find anywhere else, you're definitely gonna wanna check out Rift. As I said, it's already available now on pluginboutique.com. As usual, links in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Let it do